hey, you guys, I'm coming to you from my house. So if I happen to have to leave for a second, it's because one of my boys wakes up from the nap. Um, okay, fallacies are an error in reasoning. It's when you're not quite reasoning properly. And there are different reasons why you can be reason, reasoning improperly. You could be committing some type of psychological error or it could be a logical error. Now the book spends a lot of time distinguishing different types of fallacies. Formal fallacies, informal fallacies, fallacies of relevance. We're not so concerned with what the book designates as categories of fallacies. Instead, we're gonna focus on the fallacies themselves. And our first fallacy today is appeal to force. And this is a threat to get someone to accept your conclusion or to accept what you think. So I say to somebody, I want you to agree that the Galaxy Note is in fact the best um, phone in the world. And if you don't, I'm gonna take this phone with its big huge screen and I'm gonna hit you in the head with it. Okay, well that is clearly an attempt to coerce someone into a position by threatening them with physical violence. And that has, the, the whether or not this is the best phone in the world, has nothing to do with me beating you over the head with it, right? So, so it's it's incorrect. It's a fallacy because um, threatening someone has nothing to do with the truth. Okay, next up, appeal to pity. This is where you are trying to evoke pity from a listener, a reader, or someone you're arguing with, um, or towards some third party to get them to accept a conclusion. I get pulled over by a police officer. He starts writing me a ticket because he has me traveling 25 miles over the speed limit. Um, I say, oh, but but officer, you know, I'm sick and I've got all these bills and da 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 da. And, um, and, and that's an appeal to pity, right? I'm trying to argue that I'm not, I shouldn't get the ticket because I have all these bad things happening to me. Well, those things have nothing to do with whether or not I was going over the speed limit, right? I mean, they have nothing to do with it at all. I've either been over the speed limit or I haven't, and, and that's what's relevant for the purposes of the speeding ticket. Um, just look at those beautiful little eyes of that crying baby there, and you'll get an idea of appeal to pity. Next up, appeal to fear. Um, this is when you're trying to get someone to accept something um, on the basis of scaring them into it, essentially. So it can be related to appeal to force. But remember, force is going to be an express, some type of express threat of violence. Fear would be something more like, um, oh gosh, if Obama has us... Hold on, I may have a crying baby. No, we're okay. Um, if Obama has us sign this treaty, then um, we are going to become a, uh, a communist state or something like that, right? So the idea is you're preying on somebody's fears about communism to get them to not endorse a particular treaty that may be in the United States' interests, right? Um, so it's different than physical force, but it can overlap. Okay, um, Monster of the Week number one, here we go. Monster of the Week, number one, is the werewolf. And the werewolf um, shows us the appeal to bandwagon. And the general form of the bandwagon is everybody believes this, so you should too. And that is never more well demonstrated than by the movie Teen Wolf 2 with Jason Bateman. So Jason Bateman uh, is a great actor. I like him. Fantastic. But um, this is an awful movie. And I remember when it came out, I was very excited because I loved Teen Wolf 1. I'm willing to admit that. And uh, people said, this is a great movie. Everybody thought it was. And so I went to see it, and it was awful. And I told one of my friends, I hate the movie. And he said, well, everybody likes it. You should just like it too. No, that's not, it's not relevant. Whether, you know, it's not that everyone likes it that makes it a good movie. It's an awful movie, right? Everybody thought it was a good movie. It wasn't. So the bandwagon is where you try to get someone to accept a conclusion because lots of people accept that conclusion, right? Um, okay, next up, appeal to vanity. No picture for this one. I do apologize. This is often just linking some type of product or conclusion with a famous person. So Ed Bagley Jr. thinks we should not use gasoline-powered cars, so we shouldn't. Now, 
it turns out there are probably excellent reasons for, for moving to alternative fossil fuels, but, but appealing to someone's vanity by saying, look, you know, Ed Bagley Jr. feels this way, you should too. You're basically saying to somebody, you know, you're cool like this person, so you should do this, right? You're cool like Gwen Stefani, so you should buy the same makeup she does. Um, so that's appeal to vanity. Um, okay, monster number two. Here we go. Go away. Come in two seconds. It works. Monster number two is Vampira, and she is going to help us demonstrate the appeal to tradition. Um, the appeal to tradition is just simply where you where people are doing something for a long time, so that makes it right. Now, what does this have to do with Vampira? Well, Vampira came by came about in the 50s, and at this time in American culture, Vampira was she presented herself as a single person. She didn't need a co-host. She was a very empowered female and um, in control of herself. And in 1950s America, that was a little unusual. Um, that that didn't quite fit the role that that society thought she should play. And so um, she was questioning what the traditional role of, of a female would be there. And so, the, of course, the idea is that just because women had been in this role for a long time doesn't mean that they should continue to be in this role. Um, they, they have their own um, essence and their own power, and they are equal to men, right? And that was some of what she was coming across uh, with. Um, I would recommend a documentary called Vampira and Me. Um, it's really good and um, talks a little bit more about Vampira and actually introduces the actress. Um, I'm going to get her name wrong here. I always do. Myla, Sir Myla Nurmi. Um, she changed her name. Any case, um, she fought convention at the time. Uh, now, in some ways, she emb she embodied tradition, certainly, but but generally speaking, she fought against the grain of what a female figure should be in in society. Um, and so she helps with the field to tradition. Okay, um, next up, ad hominem. By the way, you can pause at any point in this video. I'm just racing through them, but you can pause and rewind at any time. Ad hominem circumstantial. Ad hominem is a personal attack, and there are different kinds of them. It's an attack against a person, and when you do an ad hominem circumstantial, all you're saying is, look, um, because this person is X, they are always going to argue this way, and so they are probably wrong. So a great example might be Mitt Romney. Let's say Mitt Romney thinks that um, we should, hold on, I may have a crying baby. Maybe Mitt Romney thinks we should take a tax cut, right? We should reduce taxes uh, for, for a particular program or something like that, or cut spending. Someone's going to say, well, Mitt Romney's a Republican, so of course he's always going to say that, so he's wrong. Well, no. I mean, he, there may be very good reasons for cutting a program or reducing taxes, right? There may be independent fiscal reasons for doing that. Just because he's a Republican doesn't in itself um, mean that his argument should not be taken seriously. Okay, so we finished with Mitt Romney. Next up, ad hominem abusive. Fancy way of saying you're just personally attacking somebody, right? So consider um, Napoleon Dynamite. Idiot! Duh. When you are, when you have a bad argument, it, it usually means um, that you're going to try and backpedal. You're going to reach for something that you can use and personally attacking someone is a good way to do that. So you will hear people say, for instance, on both sides in philosophy of religion, you'll hear someone say, atheists are idiots. Or you hear someone say, theists are idiots. Right? Well, that, that's not an argument. That's just a personal attack. Right? You're, you're not trying to demonstrate the truth of a conclusion that God exists or he doesn't exist. You're just hurling a personal insult at somebody. And a personal insult has no bearing on, on someone's argument. So that's why ad hominems are, abusives are a, um, a fallacy. Tu quo cu, fancy way of saying you too. Um, you answer criticism with criticism. You show inconsistency or bad faith. So 
you might point to Bill Clinton. So this is Pee Wee Herman, and he's famous for saying, I know you are, but what am I? So I apologize for the voice. Um, but um, it's perfect when you think about somebody like Bill Clinton and how um, he used to eat uh, fast food all the time. And then he would give a speech about how important diet is for America and so forth. Well, you might say, look, um, Bill Clinton's um, advice that we don't um, eat fast food is ridiculous because look at all the fast food he eats. Well, look, I mean, he's probably correct, right? Fast food, you know, we if we reduced our fast food intake and increased our fruits and vegetables, right, whole foods, um, you know, that would be a healthier option. It has nothing to do with his own diet. You can know something is true or have reasons for it to be true, but you don't follow those reasons, right? Okay. Accident fallacy. This one is, um, it, it happens somewhat often, but it can be difficult to detect. Um, it's a, when a general rule is applied to a specific case that was never intended to cover. Cutting people with knives is a crime. Surgeons cut people with, with knives, and so surgeons are criminals. Well, look, I, I mean, the, this, this idea of cutting people with knives is a crime is certainly true, but that was never intended to apply to surgeons, right? I mean, that's a different part of the penal code. It's totally irrelevant to what surgeons do. It's a general rule. Um, it has nothing to do with anything. So um, that's the accident fallacy. Straw man. Um, straw man is when you're distorting someone's uh, argument for the purpose of just making it for attacking it. So let me give an example the book uses. Suppose it's like what the book uses. Suppose there's someone named Jerome, and Jerome is arguing for the separation of church and state. And someone says, well, Jerome is arguing for the separation of church and state. I guess we should just go with atheism, blah, blah, blah. Well, Jerome may in fact be a devout Baptist or devout Catholic or or right or or Muslim. I mean, he may not be advocating atheism at all. Instead, he just doesn't want government to have a say in his religion and his personal religious beliefs and behaviors. Um, so a straw man is when you're distorting someone's argument to make it look like you're winning, right? You create this fake image, a straw man, in order to tear it down. Okay, um, missing the point. Um, premises of an argument support one conclusion, but then a different conclusion, often vaguely related to the correct conclusion, is drawn. Um, there have been a lot of violent crimes lately, so we should have more unlicensed guns. Well, that's missing the point entirely, right? Someone may be arguing there have been a lot of violent crimes lately, so we should increase funding in, poli in police uh, patrols or something like that. Um, or, or you might even try to say, <laughs> It's time for more licensing of guns, right, because of these violent crimes if they've been committed by um, people who are not uh, using licensed guns. Um, okay, so hopefully the missing the point fallacy makes sense. Now we have red herring. Um, this diverts the attention of someone to sort of make them lose track of what the point of the argument is. So uh, Senator Carp, Carp is a fish, by the way, that is a big funny joke for those of you who know what a carp is. Senator Carp's, because this is red herring fallacy, okay, Senator Carp thinks the speed limit is too fast, but cars are very gas efficient nowadays. Well, look, Senator Carp may be thinking the speed limit is too fast due to safety implications. It, it may have nothing to do with gas consumption at all. In fact, it probably doesn't. But instead, um, you know, someone tries to say, well, cars are gas efficient. You're wrong. Well, that may have nothing to do with his argument. You're trying to distract um, listeners from the issue at hand. Okay, uh, I don't know if you can see it or not, but on the back of Homer's little sandwich thing here, it says the end. So this is the end of our lecture for this week. I've tried to condense it down, just boom, boom, boom. It's 15 minutes. Please feel free to rewind and go back and, and look at more examples. Um, I would encourage you guys to do the exercises in 3.1 um, that I have assigned, and I've done a little video of them, and I will also post, excuse me, 3.2, 3.2. I will also post um, the answers to exercise in 3.2. Okay, you guys, thanks.